What's up guys? Welcome to my garage. Today I have a little bit of updates on the build and I'm gonna have um, like a, just a simple demonstration how can you guys find the true target center. So as far as my build I'm waiting in it's still waiting in a couple parts that I order actually quite a few parts. Um, on this specific cylinder that I'm trying to maximize the cylinder best way as I can without I'm trying not to fail not to break nothing <laughs> um, trying to do something different from the past um, I have a pretty big intake right now at this point um, our biggest challenge all is going to be the cylinder studs since they are so close we are limited to that um, with that being said um, I already ported the exhaust port. It's, I think it's right there. I don't think I need to do nothing more on exhaust port. I've been working on intake, trying to improve all this. It's not gonna be easy if I don't wanna weld it no more. Um, I'm gonna end up needing to filling this with some type of epoxy. Um, um, not having the parts, it kind of delays me a little bit. So most likely uh, next week. I'm going to start working on engine cases, trying to clean everything, um, do everything that I need to be done. That is going to be a bearing that needs to be replaced as well. Uh, sorry, a bushing that he, that it needs to be replaced with a needle bearing. Uh, when we do this type of builds, the bushing on the uh, left side of the engine case doesn't hold, so it fails. And that's something that it needs to be done for sure. So for now, let's. Uh, I'm not gonna do it with the cylinder head on on the top. I'm gonna do it in a different way, so you guys at least can have a better idea what's going on. Okay. Three days later So I'm going to use this tool just for to show you guys how it work and like you guys can maybe be able to see where the pistons at and all of that. But the correct way to do it is when you have the cylinder head installed and you use something 
similar to this or an adapter for um, a dial indicator okay so that will be the accurate way now as far as the degree wheel if you guys can install or have a bigger degree wheel it's going to be even better because of the resolution resolution is going to be much better the pointer you always want to sharp your pointer to be even more precise more precise you are with these details more accurate is going to be the measurement okay okay so we have our uh, tools installed and the way i usually i do this is i set up the dial gauge uh, when i think it's on the top that center right well i'm trying to still understand where it is so far for example as it is right now i have about four millimeters in okay just just a little bit here it might not be 100 percent accurate still this because this arm moves a little bit and that's why it's not so precise but for demonstration purposes it was just fine okay we are right there now why i say that we need to find the true do top that center it's because of this let's see as you guys can see we can move the crankshaft a couple degrees without the piston pretty much moving and this interferes a lot a lot with our builds okay so and this is why we need to find the true top that center and the good way to do it is okay if i think this is my top that center about here I will need to move my pointer close to zero okay I'm marking zero and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate again full revolution and I'm gonna stop two millimeters before top that center so it will be somewhere around here and I'm gonna take a note of the degrees so I'm reading about 22 degrees before let me just confirm because I think I moved it yeah it's about 22 degrees now I'm gonna check two millimeters after which will be somewhere around here and I have 18 so I know if both numbers they don't match before and after I'm not at the true top that center so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move my pointer again and let me try to find and move my point about here which you guys can move also the degree wheel if you guys want okay let's see i have about 21 and a half after and I have well I have too much again I have about 23 now this this error might be due uh, inaccuracy due the the way I have the tool installed and everything but the goal is to have the degrees before and after two millimeters before and after they need to be exactly the same if they are exactly the same that's when you're gonna stop it right there 
you go anywhere on the engine and mark your true top dead center. So that's the correct way for you to find the true, a true top dead center. Let me try one more time. Let's see if I can find a value that I'm more happy with it. Because I think this should read about 22 on each side. I think it's something like that. Let's try again. Yep, sounds about right. Let me move this again. Yep, 22. And 22. So that's what I was trying to accomplish. That means that if I put a mark on this location right here, on my, for example, on my flywheel, I know that I'm 100% accurate with the true top dead center. And then like, as you guys see, <laughs> vibration, like, cause all this arm, it's not so steady for so accurate uh, measurements, but you know, it works for demonstration. Now, you guys have idea how to find your true top dead center. It's pretty useful, especially when you're trying to adjust your, your ignition, for example. Or you're trying to base yourself to do some readings for the port map. So, here you go, guys. Ooh.